Good evening. Can you hear me now? We can hear. Let's make sure that the um, that the YouTube is muted. Apologies, I have my sound settings working now. I can hear you as well. Thanks for Very your patience. Good. Okay. Well, uh, folks are filing in, um, <laughs> but I think that we should get going because we have a bit of a meeting ahead of us, and um, we do indeed. And not to be a so and so about it, but um, I'm beginning to think that we should honor those who show up on time rather than attend those who uh, are delayed. Um, so good evening, my name is Mark Diller. I am I have the privilege of being the co-chair with Andrew Albert of the Transportation Committee for Community Board 7. And this is our March meeting. Um, we have a couple of housekeeping things to handle first and then the main event will be the resolution that I suspect many of you are here for and are filing in to hear about or perhaps speak about. Um, uh, I will have a couple of things to say at the beginning of uh, when we get to the east-west um, protected bike lane resolution con uh, consideration. Um, but first and foremost, we are, we've are we been joined by our colleague and the chair of the um, Budget and Strategy Committee, Roberta Seamer, who wants to address the committee more or less, but anybody else who um, has an ear. Um, about the district needs statement and the associated statement of budget priorities. Roberta, are you ready to take it? I am ready. So tonight, two exciting things that we're all very thrilled about. March Madness and the district needs statement, which I know you've all read many times. Uh, so this is just the start. I, I wanna remind you that the, the district needs and the budget priorities are due in June. Um, we vote on them in September. If there are any changes, obviously over the summer and early September, we can make changes and additions. Um, Anthony, who's my co-chair and I have prepared a document for each of you, which we will be forwarding probably tomorrow because um, we know you had other things to think about tonight. Uh, so tomorrow, look in your mailboxes and, and we hope it's a good meeting tonight. We hope March May, right? Excuse me, Roberta, we, we forgot to mention we're also excited about my new grandson. Oh. <laughs> well, we'll make sure that at the end of the meeting we can share screens. Okay. Um, uh, and mazel tov. Um, okay. So thanks. Uh, we're, we've been joined by um, a bunch of folks um, uh, that I want to shout out just a, very quickly. I want to thank the chair of the board for joining us tonight. Um, we have... Um, it's my turn to, to thank the district manager and the and Jesse, whose title I can never remember other than the title of indispensable um, uh, for, for helping us get uh, things organized both today and well in advance. Um, and, um, uh, and I appreciate, uh, and I know Andrew appreciates all that effort that goes to make what I hope will be a, uh, a smooth, if perhaps um, a detailed meeting. Um, to, to deal with one other um, sort of not quite ministerial act, but a quick one, I hope, uh, just so that we can uh, move forward on the, uh, on the other resolution. Um, there is an item before us. Um, Andrew, do you want to take this one with? Um, yes. Yeah, sure. uh, it's a uh, revocable consent uh, concerning um, 33 West 89th Street. Uh, it's a proposal to construct, maintain, and use the stoops and steps and storage area, including a trash enclosure. Uh, these, this has been approved by the Landmarks LPC committee, but of course, transportation also has to sign off on it. Do we have uh, the applicant uh, present? Uh, this might be Eric over here. Eric, if this is you, just uh, click what I'm sending you. And if Max, if you have a, a, a photo of the uh, of the proposal, that would be wonderful if we could put it on the screen. Um, I don't actually, although I can dig for it, but um, we've enabled share screen such that they can as well. Sure. But I can also dig for it. Max, uh, I believe Joe, Joe is here to speak on that application. Oh, Joe. Okay. Look, yeah, good evening. My name is Max, George Tucson, the architect. The, um, I'll look for the image. You guys go ahead. I okay. can I can show you the DOT filing if that helps. Sure. Sure. Okay.
Um, I don't think I can actually. It's not working. It's not allowing me to. Uh, no, I have it. Uh, it says, um, okay. yep, you should be good. Remind me of the address, please. 33 West 89th. Thanks. I'm not quite sure. It's, everything's grayed out when I try to share my screen. It's not allowing me to add anything for share. I think you can now. You've just been made a co-host. Yeah, right. let's try that. It's, uh, yeah. Okay. It's still the same issue. Um, Jesse. This is the one I emailed to you last. Is it possible for you to share this? Give me a second, I'll pull it up. Sorry about that. I have Jesse working on something else in the background to get a sign up link into the Q&A. Oh, here we go. Great, thank you. Uh, so we've applied um, to multiple agencies for this res restored stoop at 33 West 89th Street. Um, it's been approved by Landmarks, by DOP, and we had applied to DOT about two years ago. Um, this was just brought to the community board now. Uh, but essentially, we are restoring the stoop that was previously installed at 33 West 89th Street based on original drawings and based on the exact same stoops that are on either side of it on the flanking buildings. Um, the only change from what would be an exact match to the adjacent stoops is that DOT required us to push it back about nine inches to maintain five foot clearance at a tree pit. So um, you can see some existing conditions in the photo here. Uh, you can see this in the first photo, stoops on either side, right in the middle. Photo number two, that's a close up of the existing conditions. It's got one of those lower entries now where former entry into the stoop. Photo three shows it um, looking to the west, and photo four is looking a little bit more to the right. Um, Jesse, is it possible if you could advance this? Thank you. So this shows your existing conditions on the left and the proposed conditions on the right at the lower level. So this shows that there would be a set of stairs that goes down on the left side, um, the stoop going up and to the right. Underneath the lower portion at the basement level entry, we're going to have a trash enclosure as well. Um, under the stoop, completely enclosed. All the details on the stoop essentially are going to match except for the one depth. You can see on the clearance in the front at the tree pit is five feet, which is what DOT made us hold. If you could please advance, that'd be great. Thank you. So this is just at the level up. Uh, the plan on the left is the same, existing condition. On the right shows the stoop at the first floor part of the level. Uh, you can keep going, Jesse. Thank you. Uh, this is a section. Both sections are through the proposed stoop. The one on the left is through the upper level of the stoop with the trash enclosure below. And one on the right is further over at the lower level steps. And you can see the gate that would be in the background leading to the enclosure under the stoop. The details are essentially going to be matched to the original design. And as you can see on sorry, let's propose sketching on the left. There's also an existing vault that's remained the whole time. We're just re remaining going to keep that and bear right up back on top of it. Thank you, Jesse. And if you scroll all the way down, you can see the stoop at the bottom. Essentially, existing conditions on the left, proposed conditions on the right. Right. And, and the proposed uh, construction period, when do you anticipate that would start? Um, <clears throat> that has not been set yet. Uh, essentially, we're waiting for the DOV revocal consent to be formally approved. Uh, we do expect once it starts, it will probably take about six months because it would be done in conjunction with some other interior renovations. There's going to be a full interior renovation of the building as well and a rear yard extension that was already uh, brought to the community board back in November of 21. There's been quite a delay in this project, primarily because of um, conditions with the tenant over COVID. Uh, they've had to remain in the building. So we're waiting for that process to kind of work through. 
Um, right. But once it starts, the stoop work is expected to be about six months. It should not impact the neighbors much. There will be a, a sidewalk fence uh, put in place and sidewalk will be kept clear. All right, thank you. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Mr. Jatuso? Um, it looks it looks fine to me. It looks very tasteful. It looks uh, like an original, uh, which is wonderful. Um, can we get a resolution? I, of, I had okay. a question, Andrew. Oh, there, are two, sure. yeah, there are two uh, hands up among committee members, and then yeah, please. Um, I and see then also one somebody in from the public as well. Uh, yeah. Why don't we go to the public first? Okay, sounds good. Uh, that's Michael Gawley. Yes. Michael, please tell us. The um, uh, floor is yours. You need to unmute. Go ahead, Michael, if you're there. Mike, please un unmute. You're muted. All right, sorry, I think that was an accident. I don't have a question or comment. Thank you. Thanks. All right, thanks. Then let's go to uh, committee members. Uh, Ken Coughlin. Yeah, um, so if I'm understanding correctly, this is going to encroach on the sidewalk, um, um, which is currently, what, I don't know, eight or nine feet uh clearance and and it's going to reduce it to five feet between the um the, the stairs and the tree pit that's correct okay and and dot required what you move it how far nine inches there's four foot three clearance currently between the tree pit and what would be the line of the other stoops on the other side of the property they made us move back for a five foot clearance from the tree pit to the outermost point of the stoop. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, Susan Schwartz. Thanks so much. Is this a building landmark? It's not an individual landmark, it's just in the district. It's in the district, right. Okay, and has it been presented to preservation? Yes. yes. For the front part? Yeah, for the full renovation, including the interior and the rear yard. Well, but what about the? What about the uh, the facade? Uh, the stoop? Yeah. Yes, yes. The full project was already presented for preservation in November 21. Great. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Irena? I just wanted to uh, thank Mr. Tatuso for uh, bringing, restoring the integrity of this brownstone. I almost never see that happening. And I'm just delighted to see it. So thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome. We should thank our client. Uh, it's really, it's really them who's making us do this. But it, it'll look great. It really will make the block better. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, can we get a, a resolution of approval? So moved. Great. Uh, all those in favor? The committee first. Committee first. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I see nine committee members in favor. Let's lower those. Uh, any committee members opposed? Don't see any. Uh, any committee members abstaining? Don't see any. Uh, Non-committee board members in favor of the resolution of approval. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, Elizabeth, you're a committee member. So um, did you yeah, want to I vote just, in? I just arrived, so I am voting. All right, we'll as add welcome. Member. Made it committee. in good time. Uh, so we have one, two, three, four. Four non-committee uh, board members in favor. Uh, any non-committee board members opposed? Any non-committee board members abstaining? All right. Uh, can somebody read the vote? Because I don't have it right now. 
I have 10 to 0 to 0 to 0 and 4 to 0 to 0 to 0. Resolution carries. We thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jatuso, very, very much. Um, All right. Mr. Jatuso, for the minutes, uh, I missed your affiliation. I'm the architect on the project. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right. So now we're going to turn to um, uh, item number two on our formal agenda, um, the consideration of a, of a resolution on an east-west um, um, protected bicycle route um, approximately every uh, 10 blocks. Um, a couple of ground rules, and then I'm going to call on Jay Adolph, who um, will speak to some potential changes, uh, and then we'll talk about the process for that. And then we'll hear from the public, and then we're going to hear from our colleagues and hopefully um, uh, make a decision on the resolution. Um, so uh, I want to renew, in case anybody was still signing in, I want to renew my thanks to the district office staff, especially Max and Jesse, for shepherding us through this process. Um, I want to thank everybody who um, uh, participated in the field surveys, including non committee members, such as a chair of our board. Uh, for, for walking the streets and, and looking at the conditions on the ground um, and for schooling me in um, how to use Google <clears throat> Forms and Docs so that we could hear from more folks. We have heard from over 225 people in the community and beyond, um, and uh, I actually should be thanking Natasha and Susan for that because they taught me how to do that, and I'm grateful for that lesson. Um, a couple of um, a couple of ground rules and requests. Um, the request is that, um, except when your Wi-Fi doesn't support it, we ask our board colleagues to please have your cameras on while you're uh, listening to the public uh, testimony and participating in tonight's meeting. Uh, the open meetings law more or less asks us to do that, and we should get in that habit. Um, obviously, there are times in which one needs to turn it off, and that's not an issue. But generally speaking, we do ask that. Um, uh, I'm going to turn to Max in a moment and Jesse and ask uh, for the uh, sign up sheet on how to sign up to speak uh, for the public. Um, and I want to make a, a note um, that, um, well, the first is that we have an awful lot of folks in the room already and there may be more on the way. Uh, and even though it pains me to do this, I'm, I, we're going to institute a one minute comment time. Uh, for uh, public speaking on this. Um, it is uh, important that everyone honor that uh, because we need to hear from as many different voices as we possibly can uh, in this, in this, in part because we hope that this will be the time in which to be heard um, uh, on this issue. A word about uh, the substance of our comments. Um, oh, but the timer will start after you say, can you hear me? And then go on to say your name. And then uh, we would ask you to tell us your connection with our district. So I live here, I work here, I travel through here, whatever it might be. Uh, we ask, and then as soon as you finish that, we will start the timer and really gonna be as um, as diligent as we can about, um, about cutting it off at the one minute is really important. I see Elizabeth's got a hand up on that. No, okay. I, I do, I do. Okay. I was I was muted, so go I, ahead. I, I just um, this is the first meeting I believe we've been told about being on camera for the meeting. I just want to state for the record that the open meetings law ruling uh, I, I believe is still in effect. Where um, while I appreciate that that's a good practice, it is not required yet for board members. Yeah, that's you. it. That's exactly correct. Uh, I was saying that as, as good practice, not as, as a requirement, but it is a request. And, and it's one that we understand, especially with Wi-Fi issues, we understand that sometimes that's necessary to turn off your camera so you can be heard. And, and that's obviously a, a virtue. So thank you for, for clarifying. Understood, um, it's not required for board members yet. Not yet. Um, uh, okay, we're, uh, I have one more point to make before we get going here. Um, Actually, and two more hand this up as well, I think. Yeah, um, I'm not finished with thanks because, and Ken is among those that I want to thank. Ken and Alex are taking the taking the minutes tonight, um, which may be a task. Uh, so we thank you for for do, for for taking on that that responsibility. Ken's got his hand up, and then we're gonna. I have one more point to make, and then we're gonna uh, move along a little bit. 
Okay, um, Mark, uh, just in a suggestion, since we don't know how many people are going to be speaking, at least I don't know, um, perhaps we could start with two minutes, and then if, if things, you know, the hour gets late, um, cut it back to one minute. You know, I, I might uh, under other circumstances, I might I might go for that, but I, I do expect a fairly robust turnout. Um, and I really think that we need to be fair to everybody um, in terms of equal access to us. Um, so so thanks. But I, I think I have to move that in a different direction. Um, the um, let's see. Oh, and Barbara's got her hand up. Go ahead, Barbara. Uh, yeah, just a clarification to the people taking minutes. Um, you know, Robert's rules does not call for ha having uh, every name and every comment that's made. Just re if you want to record a list of the names, you can, or you could just say there were many speakers on a particular topic. But it's against Robert's rules to go into detail when writing minutes. That's all. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Jay, I'm going to call on you in a second. Is there something you want to add now? Well, I, often when we have uh, a large turnout like this and uh, a subject where we think there might be uh, yeah. contra so we have to stop the people that need the list. Uh, let's mute, please. Thank you. Where we have where, where we might have extensive contrasting views, uh, we've divided it, called on a certain number of people pro and a certain number of people con I have I don't have a list and I don't know if if that's feasible but if there's a significant number on both sides you might want to do that so we in in preparation for this meeting um we reviewed that possibility and it turns out that okay. it's very hard to make sure that we call on everybody if we jump around the list Okay. Um, and I am, uh, and I think it's more important that we call on everybody and not miss anybody than that we go back and forth for and against like they do with city council. That would have been my preference if there were another way to do it. And I learn as I go. So while I don't anticipate doing this again, um, uh, we may, uh, I'll, I'll try to find a better way. But right now, we're just going to read the list um, because that's what I've been uh, uh, convinced is the right way to go here. Um, so I'm going to call on Jay in a second because I know Jay wants to propose amendments to the resolution. Um, and I've asked Jay to hold off on that because under Robert's rules, once you propose an amendment formally, you have to take a vote kind of right then and there. And I think it's important that we all hear from each other first, certainly from the community. So I'm going to ask Jay to sketch out in brief detail what it is that he's going to ask us to consider later in the meeting but he's not gonna actually make the formal motion now so that we can have one set of comments, one vote or perhaps one or two votes, um, one discussion and then and then so forth. I think that's more efficient. Um, but before I call on Jay, the, um, the one thing I wanna be really a little strident about, uh, and this is, um, well, yeah, I wanna be a little strident about this. Uh, Jake uh, highlighted for us just now that this may be a matter in which there are diverging views um, and that there may be strong feelings about those views. And that's great. And that's why community boards are here. And that's why we're here to listen to you. Uh, we will not be talking about each other. We'll be talking about the ideas and the proposals that are before us in this resolution. It would be great if we never mentioned each other's names. I really am gonna be attentive to microaggressions and to making sure that we have a positive discussion on the merits of a proposal that's been brought to us. This proposal was brought to this committee before I was even on it or, in, or the chair of it, co-chair of it. Um, it's time for us to discuss it and eventually to take a vote on it. Um, and we don't, and we can do all of that in a civil and collegial meeting, which I hope very much that we will all have. Um, so I'm going to call on Jay, and then Max and Jesse will instruct us on how to sign up to speak. Uh, might I quickly say that now, just to give people the time to sign up? Um, so everyone, you'll notice that um, uh, 
two people, one of us, uh, one of them was staff member Jesse under Jane Doe, have asked how to sign up to speak, and that's in the Q&A. So if you go to the Q&A, you have to toggle over to the answered section, and there you will find the questions, and, and I've responded to two of them with the link. And again, uh, it's a multi-step process. You have to go into the Q&A and to the answered section, which is in the middle. Um, if you can't find it there, don't worry. It's also on the agenda page of the website, um, but you should be able to find it here and we'll be up and out. Go ahead, Mark, or Jay, perhaps. Thanks. I, I'll take it for just a second. There's a question in the Q&A about whether we will be reading submitted comments aloud. They have been shared with, with the committee. Uh, there are 230 some of them at the last count. So no, I will not be reading uh, all of those comments, but I thank you for making them available to us. I have read every single one of them and I know others on the committee have as well. Um, so Jay, why don't you tell us where we're going eventually and then I'm gonna, oh, no fair. Alex has a, a new uh, applicant uh, uh, for, for the board. Um, I don't know if the left hand is a vote in favor or against. Um, uh, so Jay, why don't you tell us where we're going and then um, and then I'll take the ball back. I think I resent Alex's uh, blatant attempt at getting sympathy for himself before the discussion. <laughs> anyway, I, I'll be very quick. Um, what, what I I think that uh, I was actually considering starting off quickly with uh, a motion uh, to table this resolution uh, because in in a few words, I think it's premature, but um, I will deal with it when I propose uh, some two language amendments uh, to the to the uh, to the resolution in in very terse uh, form. The two resolutions deal with two points. One is the recommendation that the crosstown bike lanes, if and when they're implemented, be uh, every 10 blocks. And the second is the explicit exclusion of the parks from uh, being considered as part of any uh, crosstown network in this resolution. And, Part of my explanation will deal with the fact like, number one, that won't happen and, and why there should be additional language, why there should be language deleting the exclusion of the parks from any resolution and reciting some facts about what's already happening with regard to traffic and lanes and so forth in the park. So that's a very brief, summary and I, I do promise that when the time comes to introduce the amendments, I'll try to be just as brief. So thank you, Jay, and thank you for giving uh, Andrew and me a heads up or a preview of that so that we could plan for it. Uh, I didn't know about the tabling motion, but the other two things I did, and I, and it really does help planning a meeting like this to know what's coming and, and, uh, and to try to make it efficient. So I thank you for that. Um, can I just can I just remind everybody that um, about a year and a half ago, if not a little more, Community Board Seven passed a resolution asking DOT to install a crosstown bike lane on West Seventy Second Street from Riverside Boulevard all the way to Central Park West. The logic being that was the the obvious place to come through the park and onto the east side because that road does exist already. And we're still waiting for some action on that. Uh, we've been told possibly this spring construction may begin, but we're waiting to hear. Um, the only clarification I would give to that is that I believe we asked for a proposal, not for the actual thing. We did. Um, yeah. Um, there was a request in the Q&A for um, the resolution, which if I were to put it all into, the, what, what did I just do? Uh, put it all into the, Oh, there is no chat. Um, can I put it into an answer in the um, Q and A? Yes, uh, I believe Jesse's already answered it actually and linked it. In fact, oh, yep, I see Jesse just did already. Even better. I should have known you'd be ahead of me on that, as in everything else. All right. Um, it's also uh, linked linked on the agenda. 
Oh, right. It was it was originally right. Okay, okay. Um, so we're ready to go with. Uh, we're going to call on the public first, um, and then we're going to bring it back to the committee. At which point we'll, there'll be no more public comment. Um, so anybody who wants to speak, please follow the directions that Jesse and Max have put into the Q and A, uh, and 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 that includes anybody who's got their hand up. So if you have your hand up, um, please take your hand down and sign up the way that Max and Jesse have asked you to. Um, are we ready to start calling on people? I believe we are. I believe we are. Oh, let me rewind the clock. Jesse's okay. got the spreadsheet, and I think we're gonna make our way through it. Uh, let me just confirm, Jesse, are you set as well? Um, no one has signed up yet. Oh, Let's see the spreadsheet. Okay. Uh, I'll just make an announcement again. I'd share my screen, but it doesn't show up when I do that. Um, if everyone that wants to speak up, go to the Q&A section, and there you will find several links to this, specifically in the answered section. As an alternative, you'll be able to find this on the, on the agendas page of the website. There's a request to enable the chat, which is, yes, an easier way to do this, but for a variety of very good reasons, our board does not have the chat enabled. Um, that can be a discussion for another time, but that's the answer. I see some people have said they've signed up. We're not seeing them in the spreadsheet, though. Um, let me take a look, but it may just be a second or two lag time. You might have to hit refresh. I'm not seeing the link to sign up in the Q&A. Sure. It's in the answered part of the Q&A. You go to the answered. I'm seeing uh, Jane Wait. Doe. Yes, the, the, uh, right underneath the Jane Doe, you'll see a little downward carrot, show all. Click that. Okay. Maybe people didn't know to click that. Confirming you do see it now, though, correct, Ken? Uh, yep. Okay, sounds good. Um, <clears throat> We're looking on our end. It's not showing up, um, which is a little peculiar. Um, what I would suggest is we should give it about one more minute. If that doesn't happen, then um, we should revert to the practice just so we can get through it of going by hands. I think that's something everybody can do technically speaking on Zoom is raise their hand and then we'll go through it the old fashioned way if that's what we have to do. Um, we're I taking a suggestion that Mark or, or Mark or Andrew sign up and see if you get their name. If someone on the meeting can try and sign up. Good idea. Yeah, we can try. Mark, can we uh, remind the speakers uh, that uh, they're supposed to tell us where they reside in the district? Uh, I did mean I did mention that. I'll, okay. Um, okay. And we have quite a number of people that have said that they have signed up. Exactly. Um, so I'm I'm buying that people have found it. Uh, I think there could just be trouble on our end. Um, so if that's the case, um, I think we should probably just go with hands. I see people are already going with that. Should we go in the order from the top down? That's the only way to do it. Otherwise, we'll get lost in all this. I think that's fair, yeah. All right. So um, I'm going to, uh, Max and Jesse, do you want to do the honors and, and unmute people as we go along? Maybe unmute two or three at a time so we're ready to roll. Sounds all good. Right. Thanks a lot. 
Um, and with no further ado, let's take it away. Okay, Michael Balik will be the first person, followed by Eric Martz, Andrew Rosenthal, and Paul. You have to unmute yourself and please give us your name and where you live. Sure, uh, my name's Mike. Uh, I live on the Upper West Side, 86 in Columbus. Been living here for the better part of 10 years. Um, I'm a muter by public transit, by car, by bike, by e-bike, and a uh, frequent user of food delivery services, just to, to kind of ground uh, my, my reference here. Um, I would be a, a strong supporter of the bike lanes from east to west uh, passing through the park. Uh, I think it's a, a great public need that should be answered and think there would be uh, primarily benefit with minimal downside. But uh, I think that concludes my comment. Thank you. I should have noted at the top, I'm gonna to take church privilege for one second. Um, there is gonna be a lot of hands. I see 27 of them, of them already. If you agree with a previous speaker, you don't need to take your whole minute to say that. Um, and you will win friends and influence people if you uh, cut it short. So with that, I'm gonna uh, ask Max and Jesse to continue our line. Andrew Rosenthal. Yes, um, I'm a CB7 resident for almost 40 years, biker, car owner, frequent attendee at this committee and other committees on CB7. Uh, I was here in November when this virtually the same resolution was presented and then kicked down the road to a joint parks committee and then kicked down the road again. And now here we are back. Well, since we first met in November, there have been three people who have died in traffic fatalities within CB7 and 114 seriously injured. So I asked this committee to please pass this resolution. Let's start being proactive about protecting the lives of the residents of CB7. We have failed in that duty. The five month delay has cost us three valuable human beings. Please don't fail again tonight and vote for this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, who's next? Paul. Paul. Hi, it's Paul Crick. I live on Roosevelt Island. I ride my bike everywhere around the city, including the Upper West Side. I'll be finished in less than 10 seconds. I've spoken twice on this subject already. I'm a huge supporter of this idea. I'd love to see you implement it without delay. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for the brevity. Who's next? Eric. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Eric Martz, and I live on West Bunny Town in St. Columbus. I'm here also to express support for the cross um, bike lane from the fourth side. I say this not as a bike rider, but because I know the facts, and the facts say that protected bike lanes save lives. Uh, good street design is good for everyone, and we really should be implemented then everywhere. Um, especially when our most vulnerable are on the line. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Zebra. Hi, my name is Deborah Kirshner. I commute daily through the Upper West Side um, from my job downtown to my apartment on 110th Street. And I just want to address the comments that I've seen online that aren't the crosstown lanes already calm enough. I commute every day on 70th Street. And even though it's a calm street, I'm a kind of reticent, careful biker who bikes between eight um, and 12 miles per hour. That's not the speed cars are going at. Just this last week, I had to pull over when a Jeep was aggressively driving past me too close, revving. There's no safe space for me to be on the crosstown lanes without coming into conflict. So I just wanna voice my support and hope you understand the experience of those who are already using the crosstown lanes that aren't safe enough. Thank you. Who's next? David Zellman. Yes, um, I, I feel that 10 bike lanes uh, going across are just ridiculous. I also think that we ought to know who sent in or are voting and those people should not be from our district, nor should they be members of transportation authority, nor should be on the board of transportation authority. And to allow those people to take time speaking at our community meeting is just taking away time that uh, the community can speak. Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna do our best to hear every single person that wants to be heard. Um, so thanks for that. Who's next? Justin Levin. 
Hello. Yeah. So my, I, I live on the Upper West Side and I go through Central Park several times a week. And oftentimes I will actually choose to walk because I've had really scary bike rides through this through the park. Um, according to the New York City Department of uh, Transportation, there's been a 20 percent increase of commuting ridership from 2016 to 2021. And since 73 percent of households in Manhattan CB7 do not even own a car, it would be, it, you know, and especially since it's a matter of like life and death rather than just convenience. I think it's very important to have the, the separated bike lanes. I'll end by citing a recent 2019 study by University of Colorado that was summarized as being the most comprehensive study of bicycle and road safety to date. It found that, quote, building safe facilities for cyclists is one of the biggest factors in road safety for everyone. Bicycling infrastructure, specifically separated and protected bike lanes, lead to fewer fatalities and better road safe safety outcomes for all road users, not just bicyclists. Thank you. Who's next? Rachel. Hi, Community Board 7. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. My name is Rachel Grosso. I just moved to the Upper West Side and I work in the transportation industry as an active transportation planner throughout the nation. I work with local, state, and federal government to help implement the exact kind of products we're talking about tonight. And I cannot underscore that as a community member and also as a professional, building safe, protected bike infrastructure to connect our community with the rest of the city is the utmost importance for our health, for our safety, for climate resiliency, and for our economy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Who's next? Mary Beth Kelly. Hi, um, this is Mary Beth Kelly. I'm a um, founding member of Families for Safe Streets. You see my t-shirt. This is my husband. Mary Beth, Pablo. your camera's not on. My camera's not on. All right, I'm so sorry. Um, let me just, how do I do that? Please I'm go not, on. I'm, okay, I will just tell you then. Um, Every member of Families for Safe Streets, of which I'm a founding member, has lost a loved one to traffic violence. We have the answers. Street infrastructure is the biggest way to save lives. My husband was killed 2006 riding his bicycle with me. He was a physician serving this community. We have lived here since 1976. So I'm giving you my age. <laughs> uh, it, we lost Dr. Cameraman in 2019 on the 96th Street Transverse. We lost Jeff Williamson on the 86th Street Transverse. These are highly dangerous roads for cyclists to try to cross the park on. You know, we, we were totally dependent on our essential workers during COVID. We didn't think we could live without them. Well, right now, they might not live without us if we don't make these kinds of decisions. From the delivery person to the physician, people are riding their bikes from the east side to the west side to go to Mount Sinai West or Mount Sinai East. Please wrap your comments up. And please, finally, CB7, I know you all, I've been speaking with you for 16 years now. Please pass this resolution. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Mary Beth. Thank you. Who's next Barrett, on our list? Barrett Freeman. Hey, hey, everybody, Barack Friedman. Um, I work at a hospital uh, on the Upper West Side. I think the same hospital um, Mary Beth Kelly's husband worked at. And um, we have um, healthcare workers that uh, walk, ride bikes, and drive in. And we, we want them to get to the hospital safe, and we want them to get home safe. And bike lanes have been shown to um, make all road users safer. So thank you, CB7, for bringing up this resolution. I urge you to vote for it. We really need it. We need to get to work safely, and we need to get home safely. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, who's Dale next? Hall. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, thank you. My name is Dale Hall, and I live at 77th and Columbus. Um, like so many other people, I'm urging you to pass this resolution. And the main reason is because I live across from a school, an elementary school, and it's on a street with a paint unprotected bike lane. And there's more and more parents who are biking with their kids to school in the morning, which is a great way to build healthy habits and to reduce the terrible traffic mess we have every morning uh, on my block for school drop off. But I have seen so many close misses uh, of cars almost hitting children and their parents because these unprotected 
paint bike lanes are dangerous and completely meaningless. And I'm truly afraid for the kids' safety. And I don't blame any parents who don't feel safe biking with their kids and have to take a car instead. So please let's let DOT design a bike network that maximizes the potential for all users and reduces the traffic and noise and pollution in our neighborhood. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sebastian. I live on the Upper East Side in Community District 6. I regularly come through the Upper West Side to visit friends or to get to my office down in Chelsea. Uh, Sebastian, you're breaking up. I strongly support this resolution. I don't currently feel safe biking around Manhattan, but installing these bike lanes would make it feel much, much safer. We get more people biking, fewer people in cars, quieter streets and better air. So please let's get us these bike lanes installed without delay. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Stefan Brigham. Hi, um, I'm often on a bike on the Upper West Side, although I live on the East Side, partly to reach the Gabelli Business School at Fordham, where I teach some semesters or just to meet friends. Uh, and my one concern really over there is interacting with, you know, trucks, uh, these jumbo U, uh, Uber SUVs and just regular cars, when some drivers really don't realize how hazardous they are to us uh, when we're outside the vehicle, safe lanes, you know, for light mobility really should be a basic standard for a place as dense and bikeable as the Upper West Side. And I would really appreciate your voting in favor of the crosstown lanes. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Who's next? Brian Hogerman. Yes, hi, thanks for having my testimony. I, I've lived on the Upper West Side for close to 20 years at 97th and Amsterdam. And I'm fully in support of the protected bike lanes cross town. Uh, they're approximately 50 crosstown streets on the Upper West Side, zero of which have any protected bike infrastructure and all of which are for car, designed for cars. So I think every 10 blocks would definitely be useful and make things safer. I think we also need to have uh, crosstown lanes in the park itself since it's they're only the only crosstown lane, the only crosstown paths are on 95th Street and 72nd Street. I think we would want uh, bike paths that match where the crosstown bike lanes are on the upper and west, upper west and east side. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I want to note for everybody that this resolution only deals with the streets within the boundaries of CB7. It does not talk about the parks. Um, thank you. Who's next? Sandra Voss. Hi, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. Um, I live on 116th Street and I bike throughout Manhattan frequently. Um, love going to the Upper West Side. Um, I'm here to voice my strong support for the Crosstown Protected Bike Lanes, both on behalf of people like my own brother-in-law who was killed while riding his bike in 2020, and people like Carling Mott who was killed while biking Crosstown on the Upper East Side in 2022. Um, like someone said earlier, we've only had more deaths and injuries since we've been talking about these crosstown protected bike lanes. And the fact is that the longer we wait, the more preventable deaths and injuries will occur. Um, I'm also a member of Families for Safe Streets and have met so many people <laughs> who have lost loved ones in this way. Um, and it really is preventable. Um, and it really is a climate issue as well. Like others have said, you know, the more safe infrastructure we get, the more we get people biking and out of cars and um, the healthier our city will be. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mark, I have, a, I have a point of order. If it's really a point of order, go ahead. Yes, uh, since you, re you requested that I defer offering any amendments until after the public discussion. And since one of the amendments I'm offering has specifically to do with the exclusion of the parks in consideration of the Crosstown uh, bike lanes. I think it's appropriate that you know you just you just declared that the uh, the, the uh, resolution is exclusive to streets. But in light of the fact of the amendment I'm going to offer and the fact that I deferred it until the end of the discussion, I think it's appropriate for the public to comment on uh, the park as well. Um, thank you for that point of order. I was referring to the text of the proposed resolution um, and only that, um, and I did highlight your, give you the chance to highlight your proposed amendment 
uh, at the top of the meeting. I'm glad for the reminder now. Um, I certainly will receive, or you certainly will receive testimony about that. Just didn't want there to be confusion about what it was that's being proposed. And with that, I'm going to call on the next person. Uh, actually, Jesse's going to call on the next person. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I'll keep it short. Uh, I live near Union Square. One of my best friends lives on the Upper West Side on 68th and Amsterdam, so I'm there all the time. Uh, when I bike cross town, I, I do not feel safe. There are cars that go really, really fast and they honk at you and they're mad that you're just trying to bike in a safe place for you, which is outside of the area where the doors can hit you. Um, so I really support any additional bike infrastructure that we can add uh, on the Upper West Side. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Carl Mahoney. Hi, thanks. I live just north of the district and I work in the district and I take my son to school every day through the district by bike. Fewer than 30% of households on the Upper West Side have access to a car and only 6% of Upper West Side residents use personal cars to commute. Yet fully 97% of curb to curb street space on the Upper West Side is devoted to moving and storing motor vehicles. In fact, the street space devoted just to storing private cars is nine times greater than the street space currently provided for the existing protected bike lanes in the district. That's 11,000 stationary vehicles that get nine times more street space than the infrastructure that moves millions of people a year. Last year, more than 3.1 million city bike trips were recorded at stations within the district. Extrapolated to total trips, city bike plus personal bicycles, that's likely between seven and 10 million annual trips. If climate and equity and safety and livable streets are important to this committee, supporting improved cycling infrastructure and voting yes on this resolution is the responsible thing to do. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Nick Ross. Thank you. Uh, I rise to speak in support of the proposed resolution. I work on the Upper West Side in CB7 and I'm a resident of CB8 on the East Side. In July 2022, my girlfriend Carly Mott was killed while riding her bike to work traveling cross town on East 85th Street. She was the light of my life and the lives of so many who had the good fortune to know her. If you never had the chance to meet her, I'm sorry for your loss. We were encouraged by the fact that CB8 last September quickly took action. In the wake of Carling's death, they understood the mistake of continued inaction on policies for safe streets, including in the past shooting down a proposal that would have placed a lane on the very street where Carling was killed. It is regrettable they did not choose to act sooner. I call upon CB7 to pass the resolution before you. The resolution as it stands merely calls for the DOT to present a plan for lanes through the neighborhood. I can't imagine why anyone would not support this call for safer infrastructure. We can always quibble later about specifics of where these lanes go, how they're constructed, all the minutia. For now, I urge you to vote in strong support of getting us on the right track by passing this resolution and ensuring all of our neighbors are kept safe and we prevent more deaths in this city. Thank you. Thank you. Who's there? Thomas Proctor. Uh, hi, my name is Thomas Proctor. Uh, I live in CB7 on 116th Street, uh, quite close, or near CB7 on 116th Street. And I bike through the Upper West Side quite often. Um, I'm a member of Families for Safe Streets. Uh, and my brother Charlie was killed in 2020. Uh, uh, while crossing through an intersection that, like many of the streets and considering on the Upper West Side, was poorly designed. Uh, in, 20, in 2008, the very intersection where my brother was killed had been flagged by the city as a, as a dangerous intersection. And proposals were put forward to change it. Those proposals would have saved my brother's life. Since he died, I've seen tons of urgency to fix this intersection. Please don't wait until there are other deaths to add that urgency and pass this resolution now. Thank you. Who's next? Julius. Hi, uh, my name is Julius Busecki. I'm a climate scientist at Columbia University. Um, I currently live in Brooklyn and regularly commute to Columbia um, via the Upper West Side. Uh, I do choose to commute by bike for two reasons, uh, health benefits and mostly to reduce my carbon footprint. I strongly support the fully protected crosstown bike lanes in the Upper West Side. The sad reality is really that I currently commute uh, with the constant fear of being injured or worse um, at most times. I regularly experience being cut off by cars or having to avoid cars parked in the insufficiently protected bike lanes. And this always leads to dangerous situations. Um, 
I believe fully protected bike lanes would enable me and many other bikers uh, to get to work in peace or wherever they want to go uh, in, in peace and without fear. Uh, I thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Who's next? John. John Nassimi? Yes. Thank you. John, you need to unmute. Okay. I just, uh, my name's John. I live on the Upper West Side. I commute my bike every day. I've tracked uh, my biking. I've probably biked around 5,000 miles since I moved here about 10 years ago. Uh, this may be an unpopular opinion. I don't find that the east-west one-way streets uh, are particularly dangerous. Uh, they're generally low traffic. Um, I personally have never had uh, any uh, issues uh, riding on those streets. Um, I do think maybe some consideration should be given to providing bike lanes on wider streets. Uh, that was mentioned West 72nd Street uh, would provide a path between uh, Riverside and Central Park. Um, otherwise, I uh, don't particularly think uh, a protected crosstown bike lane is necessary at this time. Thank you. Georgia Barth. Oh, sorry, one second. Um, hi, I'm Georgie. I, I live in this district and I'm a high school student who goes to school here. Um, and I love biking all over the city and I think I would love to bike more, but often it's way too unsafe. And I think this would make our city way friendlier, way safer, way better for our climate. And I think there's absolutely no reason it shouldn't be passed. Thank you. Hi, my name is Trevor Shade. I live at 82nd and West End. Um, first off, this call has been very eye-opening and, and very sad. I hope that I'm never in one of the places that some of these people are in terms of their family or friends being killed while biking. My wife and I both bike to and from work on a uh, daily basis. I bike home um, up Central Park West then cross town on 83rd to my house. During that commute, I'm most frightened for my safety when I'm biking cross town on 83rd because there is no protected bike lane. I personally feel this should change and I feel that my community leader should be behind me and ensuring that I have a safe commute home. Um, so please pass this resolution to implement cross town bike lane networks uh, so my neighborhood can be a safer place. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Daniel? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan. I currently live in Chelsea, but I was a resident at 97th Street and Broadway for three years and was a weekly, if not daily, biker to my office in Chelsea via um, 97th Street and then the uh, Hudson River Greenway. And just here to voice my support, um, I think the Riverside Park is my favorite place in the city. And it really is a, was a terrifying ride when I would come back. Um, commuting from my office, uh, had a few options, but none were convenience and all were unsafe having to cross mm -hmm. both Riverside Drive and Broadway. Um, and uh, frankly, all were inconvenient in the way you have to navigate through Riverside Park to actually get to the street. So please um, uh, let DOT think about this and coming up with something that's very um, convenient and safe for um, everyone. And uh, please vote in favor. Thank you. David Vazar. Hi. Uh, uh, yeah, my name's David Vassar. Uh, I live in Morningside Heights, uh, but about six days out of the week, I bicycle down toward Fordham, where I work, too, uh, as a librarian. Um, when I start out on Amsterdam Avenue, uh, uh, where I live, I am always, always really anxious uh, about getting to 110th Street and making my way over to Columbus Avenue with its protected bike lane. Amsterdam Avenue with its standard, wholly inadequate bike lane is, is an ordeal. Uh, Amsterdam Avenue is also a truck route. Uh, but the truth is that we're seeing bigger and bigger privately owned vehicles everywhere throughout the city. And that certainly includes the Upper West Side. We're seeing things like Jeeps, SUVs, um, 
you know, I, I don't know what's next, Bradley fighting vehicles, but it's it's just, it's all too much. We really need the space. Um, the public space that is our streets uh, are just completely monopolized by cars. And to throw away this asset uh, for the sake of accommodating privately owned cars uh, for parking is is just outrageous. I mean, it's, it's just- uh, uh, Please wrap just, up, sir. Oh, okay, sure thing. Uh, so, yeah, we also have more two wheelers out there like myself than ever. Let's please make it safe for all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please do, folks, please do Dylan stick Kennedy. to one minute. <clears throat> Hi, can everyone hear me? Yes. Um, so my name is Dylan Kennedy. I'm on the Upper East Side, but I went to elementary school on the Upper West Side. And I'm frequently in the Upper West Side um, to meet up with my father who commutes through there almost every day. Um, I, I know there's been some discussion of more uh, frequent uh, bikers not thinking there's an issue, but um, I personally am a, a weak biker and I find it uh, difficult and intimidating when there isn't protection for me because I cannot keep pace with cars. Uh, and so I feel much safer being able to bike in this community because I am here quite frequently to see my dad and I would just feel much safer if there was that kind of protection, if there was that support. And so that's why I urge you to support um, the construction of protected crosstown um, bike lanes. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? David. I'll assume that's me. Uh, my name is David. Yes. Uh, I live on the Upper West Side, uh, on 83rd and Broadway. I've been here about 10 years and hope to be here many more. Um, you know, I feel like this is an attempt to solve a problem that does not yet really exist. Um, and I feel like it would create many new ones. It would result in division amongst your neighbors and community. I am an annual uh, past rider of City Bike. I ride the bike several times a week, but I also own a car due to the nature of my work needing to travel across the tri-state area. <laughs> I have never felt a need for bike lanes on the residential one-way streets that are east to west on the Upper West Side. Um, I've never felt any danger on those streets. You can't even drive very fast on those roads. Um, and there's not much traffic on them. Um, and my real concern is that they would take hundreds of much needed parking spots from the community. Um, it would just add to the competitive sport that parking has already become. Um, and I feel that less than 1% of the community would see, would actually use these lanes as an actual benefit. Um, but 30% of households on the Upper West Side own or rely on cars for one reason or another. And I feel like uh, I just wanna ask us all to remember that car owners are fellow human beings and your neighbors. Um, and, and often bike riders themselves, and that this proposal feels like a, a divisive and unnecessary attack on those who rely on street parking in order to be able to call the Upper West at home, um, in order that. for the convenience of the 1% who do ride bikes. Thank you. Who's Joanna next? Joanna Sperling. Hi, my name is Johanna Sperling. I've lived on the Upper West Side for 25 years, and my primary way of getting around is biking, and I find it an incredibly joyful healthy um, and sustainable way to travel. However, I do feel very often that I am risking my life and I worry about that, especially as a mother. Um, and I would really like to be able to share my love for this way of uh, mode of transportation with my daughter who is 11 and very capable on a bike, but I do not feel it safe for her to ride. I wish that there was, um, there are many times where I feel it would be the appropriate way for us to get somewhere on the Upper West Side within the district. Um, but there is no safe way, in my opinion, for us to travel together. So I feel that um, this is a good start, this resolution. It's insufficient to the sort of magnitude of the transformation that I think we all sort of uh, need uh, to make our planet uh, more sustainable, to make our way of life healthier, uh, to reduce pollution and congestion. Uh, but I think it's a good step forward into making a, um, a better city and a safer one for families. Thank you. Carol? Carol, can you unmute? Thank, thank you, board members. Uh, my name is Carol Maisonneuve. I, I commute every day on bike with my three kids, age 10, 8, and 3. Uh, they go to school in the district on 89 and, 80, and 85th Street and Columbus. 
Um, regrettably, I can't let them ride uh, to school independently. Um, that's due to inadequate bike infrastructure and inadequate enforcement as well, which make it unsafe for kids to ride through the upper west side. Um, due to cross-protected bike lanes, people in ability have to take when riding um, in the upper west side cannot teleport. As a member of a family for the street, uh, for the female cyclist, and a mother of three aspiring bikers going through the district on a daily basis, I, I hope my testimony can contribute to bring light to the obstacles and risk that are faced by vulnerable speed users in your, in your district. I thank you for the opportunity to speak my, my concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Ira? Hi, my name is Ira Gershenhorn. I've been living on the Upper West Side for 30 years. Fortunately, I live next to 103rd Street. And when I'm biking across town, I really like to be on 103rd. Some people have said that they don't like the idea of uh, streets, of side streets. They think they're safe, safe, they don't need a bike lane. That is not true. I ride in the middle of the road because I don't want to get doored. I don't want to get squeezed. <clears throat> in close past. So, uh, but most people will not do that. So you really need to have dedicated streets to go from east to west. It's absolutely necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Eric? Who's next? Eric? Hi, good evening. I'm Eric. I'm a father of three. Um, I live in Central Harlem, but my kids are going to school in CB7. They are going to soccer practice in CB7. Many of their friends live in CB7. My two boys love to ride their bike. <laughs> my oldest already uh, um, did the five-row bike tour so he can ride 40 miles. Unfortunately, I cannot let him ride his bike because there is no safe infrastructure in the upper square side. Because they are 12, they could legally ride on the sidewalk, but they do not want to do that because they have been yelled at too many times by pedestrians when they ride on narrow sidewalk. The experience is the total opposite of one of the of that of the present speaker who was saying that he never felt unsafe riding the one-way street one-way street in the Upper West Side. Whenever my kids ride the existing unprotected bike lane, they are systematically endangered by cars parked or driving in the bike lane. It's systematic every day. So I call upon CB7 to pass that resolution so that kids can ride safely on our streets and do not need to be shuffled everywhere. This is the responsible thing to do. Thank you. Thank you. Christopher Sanders. Hello. Um, thank you for letting me speak. Um, I am Chris Sanders. I live in Central Harlem, also on 125th and Lennox. And I use, I go, I go through the Upper West Side to go to my gym and to also go to work in Midtown. I'm a software engineer and uh, I ride my bike for transportation. I also take the train for transportation, but I support the resolution and I hope that you all will support it too, because I think it would make it easier for me to get around and for other Black people in Harlem to also get around safely around the city and not be uh, limited in their transportation options. So um, please support uh, across town bike lanes on the Upper West Side. Thanks. Thank you. Who's next? Joshua Pinkerton. Hi, uh, my name is Josh Pinkerton. I live at 79th and Broadway. Uh, I've lived on the Upper West Side for over 10 years now. Uh, I'm a bike commuter and a strong supporter of the Crosstown bike lanes. I've been to a number of community board meetings about bike lanes now, and I know how emotional they can get sometimes, but one person who was always able to successfully lower the temperature was uh, the former captain of the 20th precinct, Neil Zuber. Uh, I always thought it was interesting that he said his goal for traffic enforcement was to write tickets to bikes and cars in proportion to the accidents that they caused. Uh, I think that can also be a helpful way to think about street space allocation. Um, right now, you know, 30% of people who own cars in the Upper West Side, they need their cars. They're not, you know, it's generally not a fun thing, but they have 97% of the street space. Um, and bikes have 0% of the crosstown space. So I think adding crosstown bike lanes would help bring our street space more into balance um, with how they're already being used. Thanks. Megan Thank Brady. 
Hello, um, I'm, my name is Megan Brady. Um, I live on the Upper East Side, but I spend a lot of time on the Upper West Side um, running and spending time with family. Um, I'd like to express my support for protected crosstown bike lanes. Um, my roommate and best friend, Carly Mott, excuse me, um, was killed on July 22nd, 26, 2022, while biking from our home on the Upper East Side to her job in Times Square. Um, she she was only 28 years old. Um, she always had a smile on her face and was constantly spreading joy. Carling was loved by so many people and we do not want to see anyone else die trying to take a very popular commuter path. Um, her death could have been prevented by protected bike lanes. So we need further action on this and could not delay any further. We know that protected bike lanes and pedestrian safety infrastructure reduce crashes. Um, and as, as a city that emphasizes its many public transportation options, including and especially biking and biking by city bike, the infrastructure across the city needs to keep up in order to keep people safe. Um, Carlene was someone who always fought for what she believed in and those who loved her are committed to doing the same. We want to make New York safer and protected crosstown bike lanes on the Upper East and West Sides provide a concrete step to do that. So thank you and please support the crosstown bike lanes. Thank you. Michelle. Hi, my name is Michelle van der Kloor. I'm an Upper West Side uh, resident and a Dutch native. Uh, having lived in Amsterdam uh, for many years, I've seen uh, good examples where um, uh, cars, cyclists and pedestrians can commute in harmony. Uh, and I think one of the key things there is the fact that um, the road, uh, the bike lane and the sidewalk are separated. So I hope we can accomplish something similar here in the Upper West Side. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Maria Danzilo. Hi, good evening. Um, I just think that this might be a bit premature. Um, I, I see that the committee, I was at the meeting last year when the 72nd Street Crosstown Lane was approved, and it is a very wide street <clears throat> and would be appropriate for a crosstown lane. Um, I was just over at 79th Street, which is a one lane. And I think one of the issues that has come up over and over, I'm a 42 year resident of the Upper West Side in the West 80s. And, um, you know, I walk through the park regularly. I use the pedestrian path, which is a, a very rocky uh, uh, road that really needs some some refurbishment. But one of the things that I've noticed about the bike rollout is that we always do things in a rather hasty way and a less than thoughtful way. And I think that we really need to let 72nd Street happen and see how that goes. And if there continues to be a need to really look at what streets it makes the most sense to do this with and to have sort of a blanket, you know, we want bike lanes every 10 blocks. I really, really, you know, it's very sad and impactful when people lose loved ones. I've also lost um, loved ones in traffic accidents, but we need to be thoughtful about how we do things because <clears throat> we're, and there's lots of different issues, elderly people, parents and children who walk, pet owners. Um, and then we've got the problem with the e-bikes that we're not ready. So I think we, we need to look at this more uh, holistically. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank Emily you. Brady. Hi, I'm Emily. I live on 79th and Broadway and I work as a doctor on the Upper East Side. I started biking to work during COVID when the city was shut down and I needed a way to get to the hospital. Uh, after getting pregnant and having my son last year, I no longer felt comfortable taking the risk of biking to work without a protected bike lane. Drivers would often swerve into the unprotected lane or people would double park, forcing me to pull it out into traffic. If we had a crosstown bike lane, I would cut my commute in half and be able to spend more time with my family. Thank you for considering. Thank Lauren. you. Hi, thank you. My name is Lauren DeFazio. I live on 82nd and Columbus. I've lived there for the past three years um, as a driver who owns a car on the Upper West Side and a pedestrian who quite honestly has a very hard time walking and driving alongside bicycles, um, I, I very much came into this call pretty ignorant and, and very like heels dug in about, I don't want bike lanes going across town and it's going to take my parking spots and blah, blah, blah. I have to say that I've made a complete 180 after hearing what everybody has to say. I mean, I just don't see how my convenience could possibly trump 
the need to protect commuters in our neighborhood. Um, it, it's just, yeah, it's, it's no competition. I mean, it's, it's frustrating. I, I don't want to lose spots, but I think it's a modest ask this, what you guys are proposing, this every 10 blocks to have cross town transportation. As a commuter who does commute cross town sometimes, I know how hard it is not having, you know, subways and all that. So anyway, complete 180. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Eric? Didn't we hear from Eric already or am I mistaken? A little hard without the oh. spreadsheet. Uh, yeah, uh, and we did actually hear from Eric. Okay, so how about Melinda Taylor? Yes, can you, can, am I heard? Yeah, you're alive, go ahead. Okay, um, I'm <clears throat> not taking a position one way or the other, but I'm concerned because I did read in one of the local papers that the resolution for this proposed bike uh, lane plan is modeled after one that was already done with Community Board 8, but the resolution hasn't been published or made available to community members in any way. And the New York State <clears throat> Open Meeting Law was amended in 2021 to require that any public body, which Community Board 7 is a public body, I presume, uh, it says that resolutions shall be posted on the website to the extent practical at least 24 hours prior to the meeting. Um, I've written to the Community Board previously about why the community board is not compliant with this state law. And it's very difficult to consider this resolution on bike lanes when the public is not given access to the resolution to which it is entitled. So I'm uh, Max, when was this put onto our website? Um, at least three days ago, if not longer. We It was, uh, fr it was Friday, wasn't it? Exactly. Yes, it was Friday. Um, we yeah. definitely hit the um, the three day uh, requirement. Um, For sure. Okay. Um, and it is still there now. If anyone does want to go look, um, and it's been there. Thanks. Yep. Um, I don't see any other hands. Um, uh, well, Eric Morris, but you already spoke, didn't you? Yeah, we, we squared that okay. away. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, sort of last call here for public testimony for anybody who hasn't spoken already is, is the point. Okay. So I'm seeing now, so I'm going to, uh, in effect, close the public session of this, um, of this meeting and we'll, uh, we'll have board, uh, conversation questions and comments together. I think that this is a pretty straightforward thing, um, uh, especially after the testimony. Um, please keep in mind that we'll be calling on Jay before any votes are taken, uh, who will be offering at least two resolutions, I'm sorry, two amendments. Um, um, but we're going to have just one conversation about all this, so please keep. Um, Jay, do you want to just quickly, uh, if for anybody who either wasn't with us or um, needs a refresher on the, the two points that you're going to be bringing up later, and again, I appreciate the fact that you gave us a heads up about this. Um, Mark, uh, uh, one, uh, sorry to cut in and, and take away your voice, Jay. Uh, just a quick procedural question. Um, after Jay speaks and we go through the board members, are we implementing the clock for board members as well? We should have talked about that, shouldn't we? That's my that's my bad. Um, I uh, I think that what we'll do is ask board members to be concise. I don't know that we cut you off at one minute, but I want to run the clock so you're aware of how much time you're taking. Um, or should we just, uh, Andrew, what do you think? Should we just run it at one, one minute? I think we should certainly put a two minute limit on it. Um, if people can speak more briefly, that's even better. But um, I don't think we should go crazy on this. Um, the public had a minute. I think the board can at least have two minutes. Very good. All right. So that's what we'll do. Thank you, Andrew. So, but before we do that, Jay, would you want to just briefly recap what your resolution, I'm sorry, your amendments are going to be so that everybody can comment both on the text and on the uh, amendment that's that's to come? Yeah, Mark, just a, a, a question. Um, a substantive amendment to a resolution uh, is debatable. Uh, so, you know, anyone can comment on the resolution 
does it make more sense uh, to in, to propose the amendments uh, now, vote on the amendments, and doing so would result in knowing what the final resolution will be. Uh, I, I, I appreciate I mean, the thought, I, I Jay, but what I'm trying to, to avoid is having a discussion on the amendment and then another discussion on the resolution. I think that we can do both. Um, and so I would uh, ask for your continued indulgence on that and, and ask you to quickly highlight what it is that you're going to be proposing. Um, and then we can have one discussion, one set of votes, and then uh, maybe even catch the, the West Coast games on NCAA. Yeah, um, very simply, my first proposed amendment will be to eliminate the references to every 10 blocks from the uh, request for crosstown bike lanes. The second proposed amendment will be to eliminate the language from the resolution that excludes parks uh, from consideration for a crosstown uh, bike lane. And I'll add uh, a, a brief sentence about coordination with the Central Park Conservancy Department <clears throat> parks in the plan in any plan that's submitted to the board for its consideration so relatively simple actually not directed to uh, support or not of the resolution itself but rather to the form and content uh, of the resolution okay so thank you for that uh, I will um go straight. I, I won't comment, uh, except when I have the floor to comment. Um, at some point, I will indeed call on myself. Um, the uh, We're going to go straight to, to comments. And just as we did with the public, we will take the hands in the order in which they appear on my screen. Um, and uh, we ask you to be mindful of the clock, um, which Max will run for us. And I'm hopeful that we can um, have the same uh, compliance that we did with the public. So I see Seema and then Irena and then Elizabeth, and then we'll go from there. I have uh, two quick questions. One, I am unable to access the resolution on the website. It says I need access or I requested access, something like that. So maybe if something can be done to open that up, that'd be helpful. Um, my second question is, are, is the resolution proposing protected bike lanes or simply just bike lanes? Protected. The second part is, is protected, and I will email you it right now. Thank you so much. Who's uh, next? I just, I just want to say Irena. a couple of things. Firstly, that if the committee is limiting discussion of bo of for board members to two minutes, and then you go to the full board meeting and you're limited to a minute, when, when do we actually get to discuss these matters? I just want to put that out there. Um, so I, I, I listened to all of the speakers, uh, even when I was having dinner with my camera off and I don't recall one speaker talking about safety for pedestrians. I was just struck by that. Not one person who spoke. Mostly it was about protecting cyclists. And currently on the avenues, cyclists don't stop for pedestrians. In fact, they don't stop for pedestrians in Central Park, which is why the drive study is underway. And so I'm not saying I'm going to vote against this resolution, but I'd like to know what are we going to do, create a similar situation where residents can't cross the street in the mid blocks and the way they can't cross the street in the avenues? I think we should also be talking about traffic safety and regulation of cyclists and every other moving vehicle so that people who do not ride bikes and who do not um, drive cars can actually circulate and move across the community safely without being concerned about getting hit by a car or a bicycle. Thank you. Thank you. I think Elizabeth was next and then it will be I see Sarah, Natasha, and Alex, and friend. 
Sure, thanks everyone. Uh, look, we've been involved in these safety issues for many years on Community Board 7. Thanks to everyone for their participation and their comments tonight. I think the one thing this committee is united on and has always been united on is safety. Uh, my my question and, and sort of my, my issue here is really, um, there's we are a board that is supposed to support people who not only live here, um, or bring their kids here um, by bicycle or any other way, but people who actually work here as well. And many of the people in this neighborhood are people who work here and cannot access this neighborhood um, other than by a vehicle. There's not transport, they're in transport deserts, they can't get here. We all want them to take the train. This is an important thing for them. I feel like a lot of this conversation has been steered against people who have to drive cars. There's a difference between people who have to drive cars and people who have them and use them you know, on the weekends or for whatever else. I would really like for this conversation on safety. And again, I'm inclined to support this resolution tonight, but I think we need to be um, a little bit less classist in how we think about our arguments about who actually needs cars in this neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. I see Sarah, then Natasha, Alex, and then William. Um, thanks. Uh, I, I guess I would just start by saying that if no one talked about pedestrian safety, I guess it's probably because this is specifically a resolution directed at bicyclist safety. But just to put it out there, we're all pedestrians. I think pedestrian safety is a top concern for everyone here. It certainly is for me. My kids walk to school alone now, and I'm always concerned about their safety as pedestrians. So just to put that out. Um, also, I, I hate to see us pitting drivers and bike, bicyclists against each other. I think in a protected bike lane, especially on one of the large crosstown uh, streets, I don't know that we would really need to lose any parking. Um, we could we would move it. They would they could be parking protected bike lanes. So, uh, you know, I, I really hope we can avoid that kind of pitting one against the other. Um, and Elizabeth, to your point, totally agree. We don't want to be classist in our arguments. Um, I think there's no reason to delay. Uh, we've already delayed this many months as we looked into it uh, in depth. I would urge us not to support Jay's resolutions. Um, the, the not every 10 blocks I feel less strongly about because I think DOT could potentially uh, do that for themselves. But um, the park thing seems like a real red herring since part of the reason why we delayed this was concerned that we wanted to make sure that it didn't involve the park. So now going back and saying that it does involve the park seems really um, backwards from what we talked about in our previous meeting on this. I just wanna close by saying that I live at 106 in Amsterdam. My son goes to school further down. Um, I would really love to be able to bike him to school. I've been thinking about getting a cargo bike. The bus is always late, um, at least one or two days a week. He's late for school because the bus is unreliable. It gets stuck in traffic. I would love to be able to bike him to school and I could bike him down the Columbus Avenue protected bike lane. But the thought of going from almost Broadway and 106 across 106 to Columbus is terrifying. I'm scared that my son would be in danger just biking him across that one and a half blocks on a road without a crosstown protected bike lane. Um, it's, it's really, this is a safety issue. And I, I think it matters. We can think about bicyclist safety while also thinking about pedestrian safety and thinking about our drivers. Thank you. Thanks. So Natasha, Alex, William, and then Barbara. Hi, um, can everybody hear me? So hey, I just wanted to say um, as one of the two co-chairs of the Parks and Environment Committee, um, I heard a few people, I think it was more than five members of the public who spoke about uh, bike lanes going through the park. And I just want to reiterate once again, this resolution, whether it's approved or not, you know, it is not about bike lanes through the park at all. I want to just clarify that. Um, I wanted to know um, if there are any photos or videos that you'll be sharing about what you mentioned over here, which is a and all ages and abilities network of fully protected bike lanes. Because uh, when I think about all abilities, like it, it talks about accessibility. So, you know, anytime there's an accessible restroom, for instance, it needs to be bigger and wider than like a regular restroom. So I'm assuming that an all mm -hmm. abilities uh, bike lane will have to be wider than a regular bike lane. And so I, you know, I would just like to know the, the dimensions of what you're asking for. 
And I'd like to see some photos, some examples, some videos, um, but that would be really helpful. Also, I'm not sure why there has been no mention of enforcement either within the resolution or in the conversation so far. And I'm talking about enforcement for all, whether it's cars or bikes, young, old, regardless of your socioeconomic status uh, or your profession, uh, whether your car is double parked or whether it's parked in a bike lane, it, there should be enforcement for that. But I don't see any mention of that anywhere here in the resolution. Somebody said that this, um, um, this resolution is aimed at bicyclist safety. I thought it was more aimed at the safety of everyone, regardless of whether you are on your two feet or whether you are in a vehicle with four wheels or two wheels or anything. Um, so, you know, that I, I'm not comfortable with signing onto anything that is just um, geared towards any one constituency. Um, also, this seems to be, also, I could not agree more with um, Elizabeth Caputo's um, comment uh, about not being classist and how many, many people who work in our neighborhood or anywhere in the city, whether they are firemen, doormen, doctors, they all commute in through their cars. They live in what I call, what she called um, transportation deserts and they sometimes they carpool or something, but at least all the doormen I know, they come in with their cars, you know, they need their cars and they need their parking spots. Um, also, you know, when we're talking about a fully protected bike lane that no other vehicle can go into, I don't really understand how that will work from a safety perspective because we have a finite width of a street. We are not talking about increasing the width of the street. So if you're taking up more area or more width of the street for a protected bike lane and any emergency vehicles or any kind of vehicles can actually not uh, go into that area in case there's a car that's double parked or for any reason uh, an emergency vehicle is, is being uh, blocked. Um, I don't really see how that would work from a safety perspective. In fact, it would really impede the working of, a, of an emergency vehicle. So I, I really would want some sort of discussion on that or clarification about that. Um, I, think, so, I, yeah. I think we are going to have to uh, ask you to wrap up. Done. So I just I agree with Maria Danzilo's um, comment as well, and um, also with Elizabeth Caputo's. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. I hope you got. Can you guys see my screen too? Yes. Yep. So this is uh, Ada and I. Ada and I ride the bicycle to um, her daycare every day. Um, so you can see her on the back there. And you can also see, this is based on the uh, the uh, field work that Mark had us do. You can see that the car goes, this is a painted bike lane on 90th Street, goes about a foot and a half from Ada's head. And you can see during this simple bike ride, uh, a bunch of cars that swerve in or stop in the bike lane and force Ada and I to veer uh, into traffic. So, you know, it's a very quick video, but there are multiple instances in this video of Ada and I having to swerve in and out of uh, this bike lane, which is obviously not very safe. So I would just say uh, this is definitely a safety issue, and I really look forward to everyone uh, supporting this important initiative. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I think William was next, then Barbara, then Jay, then Howard, and then we'll go on from there. Uh, thank you, Mark. Um, a lot of people have made points that I agree with, and I'll just be brief. Uh, I like Arena's point that we haven't talked about pedestrian safety. Though Sarah Lynn made a great point that this is about protected bike lanes, we have to think about safe, safety holistically, not exclusively. I also would say that you know the word protected bike lane should not be synonymous with the removal removal of cars, and I think that's why a lot of us may have very strong opinions. Um, I'll say this again, I, I bike all the time, I skateboard all the time, so I am an avid user of it. I'm also a smart rider. I stop at the red lights and I go at the green lights. I look both ways, I slow down a lot. Um, so it's really important that riders understand the rules of the road. All of our drivers, at least they all should, have passed a written exam and a physical driving exam. 
So who better to know the roads than those who have passed those exams? Uh, I have a bike and I could just go. And that's something that I think is very dangerous for some because not everyone knows the rules of the road who are on bikes. And um, I've seen my fair shares of close calls with myself and with others on a bike lane, on a protected bike lane on the West Side Highway um, where there are no cars. It's just reckless cyclists uh, driving and having tunnel vision. I agree with Elizabeth's point that a lot of the cars uh, who are that are in our neighborhoods are our workers, our firemen, firefighters, doormen. And I think it's important that they have the ability to continue the work that they love and to continue to come into our community. But I don't want our roads also to be exclusive to those, uh, uh, those people who are coming into our neighborhood. Uh, so for me, when I see cars, to some that's their American dream and that's the best they can do. They may not be able to get that house. You know, they may not be able to get the white picket fence. And that vehicle gives them abil the ability to go upstate, to go to New Jersey and explore a great country. Um, with that, I um, I think a protected bike lanes as a whole, of course, it sounds rational. And of course, it's the best thing to do. But we need to find a way to share the streets with everyone and not make it exclusive. Once we start doing that, once we start tearing cells apart, then we lose sight on the goal. And I think we all should use the word that our, our founding fathers use, the great word of compromise. Thank you. Thank you, William. Barbara's next, Jay Howard and Andrew Riggi. Yes, thank you. Um, I know that everybody here and everybody on our board wants everybody to be safe. Certainly I do. I don't own a car and I don't even own a bicycle anymore. Um, but I do feel like I take my life in my hands whenever I cross the street because the bikes are going both ways. This won't, won't, I won't go into a detail because a number of people said this before I did, but I do agree with what Arena said um, about being fearful as a pedestrian, just walking the streets that we were never worried about in the past. Um, the problem is that we're asking DOT to retrofit some of our very narrow east-west streets. Um, I think Maria Danzillo had a great point when she said, why don't we just take 72nd Street, which is the first one we asked for a year ago, and, and excuse me, see what could be done with that because it, that has all of the issues. It has all the things. It has the bus stops. It has the um, it has the loading zones, it has the restaurants in the street, it's got all those things. And if we could figure out a way to solve that, maybe then we could move forward. But I, I don't think, I have too many unanswered questions about this. I, I don't think I can support this resolution the way it is now. And it's not because I don't want everybody to be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Jay, do you wanna speak now or do you wanna uh, speak when you make your uh, your resolution? Your amendment. I keep getting that wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, just a, just just a couple of quick comments overall. Uh, just to save time, I agree with. I actually agree with everybody that's spoken so far, and they've all been uh, pretty consistent. A couple of I I did want to uh, comment on something that Sarah said about um, the ability to do protected uh, bike lanes uh, on a side street. Uh, it's impossible. Uh, that, that essentially means two lanes, uh, uh, two parked lanes, one protected bike lanes, and one lane where cars can actually move. And it's impossible to do that on side streets. Any delivery, any emergency vehicle being there, any drop off uh, would, would clog the streets. It would be a disastrous uh, uh, mess. So that's uh, just so we understand anybody that would consider the resolution calling for, uh, the resolution in its present form certainly would require uh, bike lanes on narrow side street and it's, it's not just uh, uh, bad, it's impossible. 
so that's not an alternative. And if you have a protective bike lane, it, it by its very nature would require the loss of hundreds, if not more parking uh, in the district. Thanks, Jay. Howard? A lot has been said, and I think the thing, I, I want to say something that no one else has said yet, and the thing I want to say is I want to thank Andrew and you, Mark, for dealing with this issue. I, I, you know, I spent six years as co-chair, and it, it makes me really sad that this, this issue has become so politicized and so polarizing. It's about one thing, safety. We all want safety, and it's time we all adopted this resolution not to put in the lanes for the people who, I spoke to some people informally about this resolution and then they said they wanted more details. I agree, I want more details too. This resolution calls for those more details. This resolution is the request for those details. So if you want details, you have to vote for this resolution. It's a request for details. A few things that were said um, that I want to clarify, um, safety for pedestrians, we had a lot of bike advocates talk at today's meeting. Um, pedestrian advocates tend to be more diffuse. I just wanna say as a pedestrian, it's absolutely essential. I will concede um, that I see, I can see that I see cyclists and motor, uh, motor scooters on the sidewalk all the time. And why are they on the sidewalk? Because there's no place for them in the street. If there were a place in the street, it would be created a much safer environment for pedestrians, safer for them, yes, but safer for pedestrians as well. Another issue that was raised um, was that it's impossible to do. Well, just go down to 13th and 14th Street. You'll see exactly what we're, what the DOT may propose. I don't know what they'll propose for the Upper, Upper West Side, but what they may propose, you can look at 13th and 14th Street. I teach at NYU. I see those protected bike lanes on side streets, which are to the inch the same width as the streets on the Upper West Side, and they function perfectly. Um, it allows loading and unloading, which as people know is a big issue for me. So that's that's something that definitely can be done. So I would urge people to vote for this if they're interested in details. If you don't like what you see, you can vote it down when the DOT comes back to us, but hopefully they'll come back to us with something we'll all, we could all support. Uh, thank you. And Andrew Riggi's next, followed by Ken, followed by Doug and Roberta. And that's the last hand I see other than my own. Thank you. Uh, I know sometimes I'm going to get myself in trouble with this, but, um, you know, people often ask me like, oh, or I say I'm on the community board and they're like, oh, my good. What do you do? And to be honest, I love all of you, but I sometimes don't know what we're actually doing, you know, this is a critical infrastructure issue of our time. Cities evolve. All we're doing is talking about asking the city to conduct a study about putting in these proposed bike lanes. We're not even giving them the details of what they should look like. At one meeting, if we're not specific enough about what we're requesting, people poke holes in it because we're not being specific enough. Then we go through this tedious process of getting very specific. But then it's overly pers pers uh, perspe you know, uh, perspective. I just sometimes think we need to kind of make decisions and we need to either say something that we want or we don't want. All this is is calling on the city to do a study, a proposal about what the proposed bike lanes would look like. And then believe me, we're all going to debate it. But if we're going to spend hours talking in all these, you know, well, if this or if that, I don't know what we're doing and what we're actually contributing to the community. People come to these meetings because they want us as a community board to actually be doing something. And that's not a knock to anyone because I'm just as much a part of this board as anyone else. But like, come on, these are people's lives. It's how they get around people on bikes, pedestrians, people in cars, they all matter. And we should consider all of their issues. But until we get a proposal, we don't even know what we're debating. So please, let's just get a proposal about upgrading the infrastructure. And then we'll debate the specific points. And there'll be a lot of legitimate ones. And it'll land where it will land. But, you know, no more meetings about meetings and, you know, discussions about doing a report to determine if we should have another meeting to do another report. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. 
Ken. Okay. Ken, Ken Roberta, then Susan, I see. Okay. Um, well, in uh, response to the argument that uh, pedestrians have been neglected here, um, there was one speaker who mentioned that protected bike lanes are safer for all street users, and he was absolutely right. Um, the DOT uh, has um, its data, and they put in a lot of protected bike lanes over the years, um, says that pedestrians uh, uh, injury reductions uh, are about 20%, uh, uh, and uh, motorists are about the same amount. See, it's 15, 20%, something like that. I don't have it right in front of me, but um, it's it makes the street safer for everyone. Um, uh, yes, uh, not 14th and 13th, but 12th and 13th is where we can go and see an example of what this might look like. Um, uh, somehow the village has survived, as far as I know. Um, it is not a disaster. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, William was talking about, I'm sorry, I mentioned a name, but, <laughs> um, but William, you were talking about compromise and sharing. Uh, right now, um, cars uh, have 100% of the cross streets, curb to curb. Um, all uh, this resolution is asking DOT to do is to consider um, giving cyclists every 10 blocks, one side of the street. Um, and uh, that seems to me like sharing and compromise. Uh, the What we have now doesn't seem like compromise to me. Um, and uh, I think maybe it's premature to um, talk about parking loss um, when we haven't seen a, re, uh, a, a plan from the DOT. All we're asking them to do is to give us a plan. We don't know how much parking loss there would be. Um, and uh, or whether there would be any. I mean, maybe, you know, they're miracle workers. Um, so uh, um, so that that uh, is certainly premature. And uh, as we've said, the unanswered questions will be addressed with the DOT proposal. So let's just move it forward and uh, the next step. Thank you. Um, I see Doug, Roberta, Susan, me, and then I'll call on Jay again. So Jay, in effect, gets the last word. Um, I uh, obviously tonight was really interesting, very informative. Um, I note that this is a non-scientific study, but of the approximately forty people that spoke, uh, three people were not in favor, thirty-seven were in favor of this. Now, that's not necessarily scientific. Does that mean that every does that represent our community? Um, a statistician would tell you absolutely not. However, I personally believe that. Everybody that spoke was very credible, very informed, very emotional. So, um, you know, the question is, do we have a silent community? Do we have a silent minority or a silent majority? Uh, there are a lot of people that do not bike, uh, that are the beneficiary um, of, they could be the beneficiary of bike lanes, but they also are the beneficiary of, of, of car ownership. Uh, it was mentioned today, there are people that, obviously work in the neighborhood that there are teachers and superintendents and visitors and customers of retail and, uh, and, and shops and, you know, and restaurants and so on. So this, all these things have to be um, figured out. By the way, I don't know why someone mentioned that uh, Neil Zuber was a former, uh, he is the, he is the current deputy inspector and commanding officer of the 20th priest and he's still very much with us. <laughs> so he, he meant deputy inspector Mallon, who's no longer yeah. with us. Mallon, Timothy Mallon, who is no, that's correct. That's right. And uh, he, he actually, when he spoke um, about the Central Park West bike lane, that actually moved my vote because uh, I found it to be very credible. So look, you know, uh, I just want to say that um, I, I, I really appreciate Andrew's comments. And the fact is that we are asking for a study. I am not afraid of a study. I'm afraid, I'm afraid that what we are doing is implying that is absolutely what we want by asking for a study and the words matter. So I'm, I'm not afraid of any studies. In fact, why don't we have the response to West 72nd Street? I'm actually concerned that the DOT is not going to, they're, they're, we're actually asking for a master plan uh, why can't they get us back to us regarding 72nd Street? So anyway, uh, in summary, I do want to study. I'm not afraid of a study, but I don't want us 
to, I don't want our vote for a study to imply that this community board is absolutely sanctioning this. I wanna know more about it. How many parking spaces are gonna be lost, et cetera. And I'll wrap up. Thank you, thank you very much. Thanks, Doug. Uh, Roberta, and then Susan, and then me, and... Th thank you so much. So I'm, I'm in favor of a study. I think it's important. Our number one issue from our, for those of you who are paying attention to the, to the Transportation Committee's district needs statement is public is safety. That's the number one need for this, for in our district needs from, from Transportation Committee. Um, I, I just wanted to respond to Natasha, a protected bike, bike, a protected bike lane is large enough that emergency vehicles can drive down it. That includes the fire and the police and, and um, ambulances. And, and the bikes are able to jump up on the curb when it's a, next to a curb and, and the um, vehicles are able to get down the street. When I lived in California in the 1960s, there was a, not a protected bike lane, but there was a green line. And if you rode your bike, on the, to the right of the green line, you know you were safe because no car dared to pass you on, onto the green, move into the green line. On the other hand, if you did something illegal, the police confiscated your bike. So that being said, I think safety, I'm for the, resolu I'm for the resolution. I don't think we should uh, confuse it by adding parks or anything else. Thank you. Thank you. Susan. Thank you. Um, I feel like I'm the caboose here. Um, so uh, I agree with a lot of the stuff that was said tonight. Um, the one thing I really want to say is that it seemed like a pretty one-sided presentation from the community, unfortunately, tonight, because I know from the e-bike hub charging station meeting where we had, I don't know, 300 people there or something, um, we heard a lot of people talk about their concern as pedestrians. There's one woman in particular who said she's terrified to step off the curb for fear she'll be hit by a bike. And I, I want to take a minute and say I feel deeply for all the people who have had tragic losses. Um, nobody mentioned Jill Tarlov tonight. She's a pedestrian who was killed by a bicyclist. I mean, look, the loss goes all around and it's tragic. And I really feel for people. And it's just, there's just no more to say about that. But, but the thing is, um, maybe it's because I'm spending a lot of time with a two and a half year old grandson right now. And I keep saying sharing is caring. Um, Sharing is caring. And I think that we have a lot of different people in the district, pedestrians, bicyclists, cars, e-bikes, and we need to all get along. And I, I just don't think right now that we should be moving ahead with any sort of dictate that we're, we want bike lanes every 10 blocks on the streets in our district when the Central Park Conservancy has already begun a very expensive, massive study to do a master plan for Central Park. We're going to need to have some way to allow bicycles to get back and forth across the park, whether it's on the transverses or it's through the parkland, something will be done. It's already underway. I know from David Saltonstall, they've already gotten thousands of replies. So it seems premature to me to go ahead and do anything design-wise on our side of the park before we know where we're going to match it up. So for example, it maybe might not be across route on 72nd might wind up being something on 74th. So it'd be premature to pick out any place to do that right now. Um, the one other thing I wanna mention is um, a detail, an actual statistic I found, which is that 27% of our residents use a car to get to work. That's a lot of people. Um, when I read it, it was in something on the streets blog, I think, and they referred to it as only 27% of people, but I'd like to think of it as more than 25% of our residents use a car to get to work. So if we're gonna be doing something to reduce parking spaces, that's a real, serious issue. Thank you very much. I would urge everyone to vote to table this for now, which is probably very controversial, will not happen. But if nothing else, I think we should wait for the Central Park study to be concluded and then do something about this. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. I think we're only going to call on folks once. So um, I appreciate that. But uh, we, we really can't go down that slippery slope. Um, I note that Colleen uh, Chattergoon from the Department of Transportation is with us tonight. Um, I'm not gonna put her on the spot, but I'm gonna note that she's here and invite her to raise her hand if she would like to be heard at any point in these proceedings. Um, I am going to um, call on myself uh, so you can start the timer on me. Um, uh, I, 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 I 
as I said, I, I, I inherited this. This was not something I brought to the committee, but rather was here before I got here. Um, having done the work and, and heard from all the folks on it, and I am kind of folding in what we heard about the Deliveristas meeting uh, last month into this, because there is a very real um, uh, concern about uh, enforcement and about uh, behavior. Um, I truly believe that the old adage about a place for everyone and everyone in their place um, is how we achieve safety on our streets. And it may take enforcement um, to, to accomplish some of that, but it also requires infrastructure that allows everybody to be, to have a place to be. And then you can really start hammering folks who are not doing the right thing, who are not in the right place. Um, I believe, however, that enforcement is a separate issue from street geometry. And I I'm very happy to have both discussions. This one, as I've, uh, as it was given to me, as I have uh, radically rewritten it, and I apologize to the original sponsors, but I thought that the, that the way it's been presented is the right way to, to present this to you as a committee and to the board. Um, I did not accept the, um, the amendments as friendly, uh, the proposed amendments that you're about to hear as friendly. The park one, because out of respect to our parks and environment co-chairs, um, I thought it appropriate to separate those issues as well. Um, and with respect to the, uh, and it is approximately every 10 blocks that uh, in, the, in the resolution, it already says that, that, that that is an appropriate bookend to the resolution on the other side of the park. And I thought that that was the right thing. So I agree with those who are saying that we're asking for a plan and that the details come from the plan that we're presented. And on that basis, I commend the resolution to you as written. And uh, in fairness, I'm now going to uh, Mark, again, let me just say one thing, please. Oh, I'm sorry, Andrew, you didn't have your hand. So I thought you were going to. Um, I just want to uh, emphasize what a lot of people have said in tonight's discussion, which is whether you drive, ride a bike, or use our mass transit system, everybody is a pedestrian at some point. And pedestrian safety has to always be uh, our number one goal. And anything that advances that, we have to, we have to, uh, follow through on it and make sure that that it is implemented. Um, so tonight, as you said, we are asking for DOT to conduct a study. We're not we're not telling them what the results of that study should be. And um, now we'll listen to Jay. Yeah, thanks. Um, I, I, I'm going to take this privilege and say one quick word about parking and driving. Um, and I hear I hear the, the folks who are talking about that. And I am concerned about that. I still uh, come back to you with this. I believe, by the way, the 23% about people driving to work includes taxis. Um, and so it's uh, there's a little bit of a different metric there than, than actually uh, uh, driving to work and parking in Midtown, please God. Um, anyway, um, so I am now going to uh, uh, yield the floor to Jay, who will make his, um, uh, I, there'll actually be two motions because you can't mm -hmm. do two things in one motion. Do you have a point, uh, Susan? What's the matter? Yes, a, a point of order. I just want to really be clear here. The resolution says that we're asking for a plan. We're not asking for, for a study. I want to be really, okay. really clear about that. A plan means that we want this to happen. We want to hear how you're going to make it happen. We're not asking, that resolution is not asking for a study. That's correct. Um, I'm not sure I agree with that <clears throat> interpretation, but your proposal. The resolution, it, but your, but your, your interpretation of the language itself uh, the language you quoted is correct. Well, uh, what does that mean, Mark? Because I'm just reading here right now. It says, um, therefore, be it resolved that Community Board 7 requests that the New York City Department of Transportation present to Community Board 7 a detailed proposal for an all ages and abilities network of fully protected east-west bike lanes with appropriate rec pedestrian yeah, refuges. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. So, so, I'm not, asking, so we're asking for a proposal. So we're not asking for a study about it. We're asking for a proposal to go ahead and do this. People should be very clear. We're not asking for a study. Right, and and can I just ask, you know, Doug Kleiman, excuse me, Mark, Doug Kleiman made a point at the end of his remarks about his concern about the, the, the resolution appearing that we're signing off on this. And I would appreciate if Doug could tell us what it would take in the body of this resolution that would allay his concerns about the, how, 
the city agencies would interpret this resolution? Because I agree with you, Doug. At, at the co-chair's discretion, I can respond. Go ahead. Well, I I think it, I'd be I you know words words are important. I I would and not to put our DOT rep on the spot, but I would like to know what a proposal means um, to Colleen and to DOT. Does does a proposal mean a study? Is it synonymous? Um, I'm I'm sorry, guys. I, there's it's an English language. It's there's a difference between the word proposal and the word study. We're asking for a proposal, not a study. It's very clear. We've asked for studies before. This is asking for a proposal. Yeah, and what we can all proposal? keep jumping in. I have a different it's not a question interpretation. of interpretation. Right, proposal right, doesn't right. mean we're so going time, to do time. something. All right, we'll go back to hands, and Andrew's next, and Sarah. No, I would just say this is the problem. It's no disrespect to, to Susan or anyone else, but we keep going back and forth about like every single word. And this is just a way that nothing ever happens. To me, a proposal doesn't mean that what the Department of Transportation is going to provide us is a blueprint for exactly what we do. They would provide a proposal. We would certainly review it. We would have multi hours of hearings. We'd probably want to table it. We'd probably want to vote on it. We want a friendly amendment. We'd want an angry amendment, or it could be a study. A study means to me something that someone's going to give me, and then I'm going to take it and implement what was provided in the study. So again, like I think we need to have some sort of trust in each other in what we're trying to do instead of just like undermine us moving forward with anything. Like this is just every issue almost. Thank you, Andrew. Um, I now see four more hands. Um, all right, please very briefly everybody because I want to get to Jay's amendments and then get to a vote because it's already 8.30. Well, I'll just echo everything that Andrew said. We're going to have a chance to vote on whatever DOT gives us. But I just figured since everyone's taking the chance to speak again, I would just jump in and say that what Susan quoted before is just not accurate at all. The census data shows that 5.6% of Upper West Side residents use a car to commute. So let's not throw around false statistics. Thank you. Let's not be calling each other. Please, let's be careful about, about how we refer to one another, okay? Thanks. Okay, I just think it's um, important to have accurate information in our discussion. I appreciate that, but I'm really going to be very, you know what, about how we refer and speak to and about each other. Okay, thanks. Um, so who's next? Jay, and then Howard, and then Susan. Yeah, I mean, as far as, as language is concerned, Susan is right. It's calling for a plan, not a study. A few words... I think would solve the problem. Uh, we could just say we call upon DOT to analyze the feasibility of crosstown bike lanes and then at their discretion present a plan. A few words like that I think would satisfy everybody's concern that we are in fact, and that's really what we're asking them for. We're, we're basically saying, you know what, we should. Crosstown bike lanes are a good idea. Would you please analyze it? See if it's feasible. And if you think it is, tell us how you would propose to do it. And I, I'm sure, Mark, you could come up with a few words to, to soften it in that regard or make it clear exactly what we're asking for. Um, so uh, equally quickly, Howard and Susan, and then I'm going to confer with Andrew, and then we'll try to <laughs> Try to move this along, okay? Howard. Um, I'm quoting from the dictionary, which I brought up on my screen. Um, it, a plan is a detailed proposal for doing or achieving something. I think that's exactly what we're asking for. If that's not what you want, vote against it. I think we want a proposal that could be implemented. Whether we implement it or not is the subject of another meeting that will probably be even much longer than this one. But what we want to see is details that can ultimately be implemented, not a theoretical study of something. We want an implement, we want to see a potentially implementable in implementable plan. And so I think the wording is excellent. Thanks. And Susan? That's great. Um, I'm not going to vote for it unless it says a, a study, because I think that's what we're asking for. And let me just say that in January of 2018, I made a, a pretty lengthy uh, presentation to the Transportation Committee um, about pedestrian safety. And what I was asking for at the time was simply 
a study about pedestrian safety in the district because back then, this was before e-bikes really took over, it was perilous to walk around. So I would also add that tonight, in addition to changing it from proposal, which says we want to plan, we're going to go ahead and do this, we're just going to talk about the details later, I think that we should have included in this that while they're busy studying, they should study pedestrian safety as well because during the e-bike charging hub discussion, a lot of people brought up how unsafe they feel. We've heard that time and time again. And even though those people aren't here tonight, they should be heard from. So just to cap up, I think this should be a study, not a proposal. And I'd like to include in it, while you're out there looking DOT, please take a look at pedestrian safety as well and come up with some suggestions. Thank you. I, we can't solve it, but I, look, I'm gonna call time, I'm sorry. Um, Howard, you've already spoken on this. Doug. My hands down. Doug, thank you. Doug, quickly, please. I just again not to not to uh, call to put Colleen on the spot, but I'd like to know from DOT whether it, it, what what if she received this resolution, what would that mean to our DOT rep? So hey, it's Colleen. Um, I I've been listening carefully to uh, what you all have been saying. You know, when you say study, study requires funding, which is financial. Um, you know finances to back a study, especially if you're looking to create fully protected bike lanes on every 10 blocks um, in your district. Um, proposal, I think, is the most suitable word that the community should go with, as opposed to a study. You're still going to get the same outcome regardless. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you. without further ado, so sorry. What, excuse me, what does that mean? I think we have the answer that we got from DOT, who were the people to whom this resolution will be sent. And so now I am going to move us along to Jay's um, proposed amendments. Jay, you have the floor. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm gonna give you a gift and not propose the amendments. And the reason the reason I'm not gonna propose the amendments is, is simple. After listening to this entire discussion, uh, I, 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 I can't support um, uh, the resolution in the form and with the uh, conclus conclusory request that it asks for, and to to if my amendments were passed, and I think frankly that the public testimony and the testimony of my colleagues is indicates very clearly that being specific in calling for. Uh, bike lanes every 10 blocks is a serious flaw uh, in the resolution. I, th I also think excluding consideration of Crosstown bike lanes through Central Park when we know that the conserv Conservancy and DOT are in the midst of a product uh, uh, studying that feasibility and it's, to use a scientific term, it's nuts to look at Crosstown bike lanes without considering the access and crosstown accessibility of Central Park. So I think it's a weaker resolution. I'm not going to uh, propose the amendments and I'm going to vote against this resolution. Okay, so I uh, promised Jay the last word. There it is. Um, so let's call the question. All those in favor of the resolution as presented, committee first, please raise your hands. I see eight, nine, I see nine. Am I correct? Somebody else count. That's what I see too, Mark. Thank you. Uh, can you lower hands, please? Thank you. Okay. Um, all those opposed to the resolution committee, please raise your hand now. I see two, Max. I see two as well. Brilliant. Hands down, please. Anyone, uh, Irena, you, you put your hand down and so did Max, so it came back up. Thank you. Um, uh, anyone abstaining on this resolution, please raise your hand now. I see one. Yep. And I can't imagine the circumstances, but is anybody ineligible for cause? I see zero. Non-committee board members present in favor of the resolution, please raise your hands now. I see one. Hands down. 
non-committee board members opposed to the resolution, please raise your hands now. I see three, am I correct? Yep. Thank you, hands down, thanks. Anybody, uh, non-committee board members abstaining from this resolution? I see one. Sam. And again, I'll call it for anybody ineligible to vote. And I don't see any. So the resolution carries nine to two to one to zero committee and one three one on the non-committee board members. Um, sometimes you can sum those if you want. Uh, the one that, that brings it to full board is the committee vote. And so I thank you all for your consideration and for the public's participation. There are still 53 members of the public present, which I think is terrific um, and, and, and I'm grateful. Um, the um, and I thank Colleen for for sticking with us till this hour, um, missing the UCLA game. The, um, uh, the the only thing I'll add, and then I'll hand it back to my co-chair, um, is that either next month or the month after, we're working on a meeting that will concern the now rampant practice of obscuring license plates, um, mm -hmm. which is a huge issue. The controller, not to steal the, the thunder from the next meeting, the controller is estimating that this could be worth $75 million in fines, although I don't know over how many years that is. It's an issue. And Andrew has been working on fare evasion. So between fare evasion and, uh, and, and uh, congestion pricing evasion, we have ourselves a, a dilemma on, on our I, transit. Yes. <laughs> um, so we're going to be working on those things. Um, those are things that we're working on for agenda items. But... Uh, I and Andrew would both be not only welcoming, but grateful for uh, to receive other ideas for agenda items, and please email them to us as we go along. Andrew, anything else? Yes, um, I will also be uh, arranging to have the station manager for the 96th and Broadway station uh, present at our, <laughs> hopefully at our next meeting to discuss issues with that station that Alex has raised and others have raised. Um, you should also be aware that the new R211 <laughs> subway cars will be introduced on the C line on Central Park West within 30 days. So you will see a bright, very exciting new uh, piece of equipment on our subway system uh, soon. You can now see the one train running on the A line if you're lucky enough to get it, but it is also coming to the C, C line. That's good. Susan? Yeah, two uh, two cheery bits of uh, opinion on the DOT. Um, one is that the the final renovation of the um, the shuttle platform at Forty Second Street is just a thing of beauty. Anybody who hasn't seen it, you should go. I, I have to say, I'm I'm hugely impressed. This was done while the station was still open, kind of like Costco renovating or expanding a warehouse while they're still open. It's well, very Susan, exciting. it was D it was not DOT. It was MTA. Oh, I'm sorry. So sorry, Colleen, I was trying to be polite. Okay, well, at any rate, whoever did it, bravo. And then the other thing is that um, I'm making real friends with the guys at 72nd Street and on the 123 line from the MTA who stand there and greet me standing right in front of the push gate. They're doing a fabulous job. I don't know what's happening with the fair evasion, but they're just all over the place. It's really been great, Andrew. It's gone down, which, which is wonderful. Uh, it's like 2.8 million more fares have been collected than the, than the previous time period. So really good. It's yeah. spectacular what a couple eyes in the street can do. Thank you. And it's good for morale too. You don't feel like an idiot when you pay your fare. <laughs> exactly. So, so, all right. Um, uh, I'm going to tongue in cheek ask for new business. Hearing none, I'm going to ask for a motion to, re or, or can we have a unanimous consent to adjourn? Yeah, I just want to say good job, Mark. Yeah, yeah great, great job, time. Mark and Andrew. Thank and, you so much. And I should let, let me, let me let the, the last words of this meeting be it. Thanks to our district office staff who uh, burned the midnight oil on this more than once. And it's not the first time they've done it. So we're very fortunate in our in our choice of staff. And I'm participating. And I'm it won't be the well last time because grateful. this is going to come before the full board. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right. Yeah.